whether if soul did not exist time would exist or not, is a question that may fairly be asked, for if there cannot be someone to count there cannot be anything that can be counted, so that evidently there cannot be number, for number is either what has been, or what can be, counted. Temperance is a mean with regard to pleasures. Some animals utter a loud cry. Some are silent, and others have a voice, which in some cases may be expressed by a word, in others, it cannot. There are also noisy animals and silent animals, musical and unmusical kinds, but they are mostly noisy about the breeding season. The moral virtues, then, are produced in us neither by nature nor against nature. Nature, indeed, prepares in us the ground for their reception, but their complete formation is the product of habit. The eyes of some persons are large, others small, and others of a moderate size, the last mentioned are the best. And some eyes are projecting, some deep set, and some moderate, and those which are deep set have the most acute vision in all animals, the middle position is a sign of the best disposition. Those who excel in virtue have the best right of all to rebel, but then they are of all men the least inclined to do so. It is not once nor twice but times without number that the same ideas make their appearance in the world. The generality of men are naturally apt to be swayed by fear rather than reverence, and to refrain from evil rather because of the punishment that it brings than because of its own foulness. A sense is what has the power of receiving into itself the sensible forms of things without the matter, in the way in which a piece of wax takes on the impress of a signet ring without the iron or gold. Most people would rather give than get affection. No one loves the man whom he fears. All virtue is summed up in dealing justly. What the statesman is most anxious to produce is a certain moral character in his fellow citizens, namely a disposition to virtue and the performance of virtuous actions. Thou wilt find rest from vain fancies if thou doest every act in life as though it were thy last. We are not angry with people we fear or respect, as long as we fear or respect them, you cannot be afraid of a person and also at the same time angry with him. But if nothing but soul, or in soul mind, is qualified to count, it is impossible for there to be time unless there is soul, but only that of which time is an attribute, i.e. if change can exist without soul. The poet, being an imitator like a painter or any other artist, must of necessity imitate one of three objects, things as they were or are, things as they are said or thought to be, or things as they ought to be. The vehicle of expression is language, either current terms or, it may be, rare words or metaphors. It is Homer who has chiefly taught other poets the art of telling lies skillfully. Long-lived persons have one or two lines which extend through the whole hand, short-lived persons have two lines not extending through the whole hand. It is unbecoming for young men to utter maxims. In constructing the plot and working it out with the proper diction, the poet should place the scene, as far as possible, before his eyes. In this way, seeing everything with the utmost vividness, as if he were a spectator of the action, he will discover what is in keeping with it, 
and be most unlikely to overlook inconsistencies. A constitution is the arrangement of magistracies in a state. The true and the approximately true are apprehended by the same faculty, it may also be noted that men have a sufficient natural instinct for what is true, and usually do arrive at the truth. Hence the man who makes a good guess at truth is likely to make a good guess at probabilities.